As I said earlier, my name is Terry Bates. I'm the pastor of Faith Church here in Oklahoma City. And uh, for the last several years, uh, I've been involved with uh, church growth, church health consulting, and that's uh, become a part of now the Building God's Way network of solutions. We've discovered that there were many churches and organizations who had visions to want to be able to grow or expand their facility. But many times they maybe were not viable enough yet. Maybe their congregations were not sufficient enough to be able to sustain that opportunity. And uh, so Building God's Way asked me to come alongside with them for the purposes of engaging a process called positioning your church. Let me give you a little background on positioning your church and myself before we get into the presentation itself. But positioning your church was really a birth out of a process that I've been involved in really over 30 years. Uh, 30 years ago, I began a research project that involved visiting and interviewing 300 churches and pastors, gaining insights from the ideas of what enabled a church to be effective in growing, and maybe what were the barriers or hindrances that were preventing churches from being able to move forward. And as I began to do that project and began to invest in that time, I began to gain a lot of different insights that I knew would eventually help me personally when it came time for me to be involved in my own role of ministry. So uh, after having completed that project, in fact, the opportunity came for me to be involved in my very first pastorate, which was in uh, California, which was a church of about 35 people. Uh, it was a group that was uh, situated, a church that was 75 years old, situated in a community that had had a significant demographic shift or change in its environment. It had for many years been a middle white class community, but over the years it had changed to becoming a very poor, economically challenged area. It had become uh, rampant with drugs and prostitution and, and uh, violence in that area. So much so that the police department in that area had renamed the location around the church Hell's 40 Acres because there was more crime, more prostitution, more drugs, and all those kinds of things that were uh, associated with that area. Now, I was raised in Newcastle, just south of here, and so being raised in Newcastle, being dropped into Hell's 40 Acres was about the equivalency of, of uh, David Wilkerson being dropped into New York City. I just didn't wear white patent leather shoes, and the story is not the cross and the switchblade, but it was my story, and it was my experience. But the Lord, out of that 300 church research project, had given us some insights that we applied to that small congregation of about 35 people, and in about three and a half years, that church had grown to over 400 people in attendance. My wife and I felt called to do church planning after that, so we uh, resigned from that location of ministry and got involved in church planning. And in that church planning project, you know what it's like. You start with ground zero. You find a facility you can rent. And in our case, it was an abandoned elementary school. And uh, over a nine and a half year period of time, that congregation grew to 1,250 people. And we were able to launch four daughter churches out of that congregation as well. It was then 17 years ago that Robin and I got called by the congregation here in Oklahoma City at Faith Church. And some of you have a long enough history around here. You know a little bit of its history and its reputation. Hopefully we've erased some of the negatives that were associated with it prior to my coming. Two pastors before my arrival had severe marital problems that ended up in divorce and, and moral failures. And then in addition to that, about the pastor just before I came, had only been there a year, but just before the Christian school was to open up its fall season, two weeks before the school was to open, he decided arbitrarily that he didn't want to have a Christian school. So two weeks before school opened, he closed the school, fired all the teachers, and the church was sued for all the teacher contracts. And all 400 students and their families who had been angered by the pastor left the church and abandoned the church and walked away. So between the two moral failures and the closing of a school, that would be enough to probably destroy a church. But there had been also one other incident that had taken place even uh, prior to that particular pastor where a well-known evangelist had come into the area and preached, a service, uh, preached some services, prayed for a lady who they believed had been uh, overwhelmed by the presence of God. The evangelist uh, was convinced of that. The ushers weren't convinced that she was blessed by God. They thought she had taken an, an unnecessary fall. An argument ensued on video camera between the evangelist and the ushers. After about 30 minutes, the ushers called the paramedics. The, ladies rushed, the lady was rushed to the hospital and died from complications from the fall for not being treated in a mindly, timely manner. So that church had grown to 2,000 at one time and fell to 300 people as a result of all those scenarios. 
So whenever I introduced myself to people as the pastor of Faith Church, I usually got one of three answers. Oh, you're the pastor of that church where those two preachers messed up morally. Or you're the pastor of that church where they closed that school two weeks before the school opened and fired all the teachers. Or you're the pastor of that church where that evangelist killed that lady in the altar. None of those are very good foundations upon which to build upon. But I had all three of them loaded in my situation. But I, I believed that there was a way that you could begin to rise above even the most difficult of circumstances. The church was about 80 years old at the time when we came. We've been there 17 years. Uh, excuse me, it was about 70 years old at the time, and we've been there 17 years now. And the church's sphere of influence is now back to about 1,500, and we've got multiple congregations that we've helped sponsor and release outside of that. And so we've restored the health. Why do I tell you that? I tell you that not to brag on me, but I have a philosophy that if I want to learn how to succeed in something, I want to know somebody's actually done it. Not in theory, but in practicum. And so what the Lord has allowed us to do is to have a practical application of the things we share and to be able to show people how to do those same things in their, in their context of their ministries to help them to be able to grow as well. We packaged a lot of these things inside the book that's over at the table called Position Your Church. But for the purposes of this seminar, BGW has asked me to take just one element out of the book, which is called Positioning Your Vision. There are actually 10 critical areas that you have to position in the local church but we're going to look at just the one called uh, vision for just a few moments. You see on the screen as well as in the byline in your notes there that vision is one of the things that enables a church to be able to break a barrier, to get over the hump. Many times there are obstacles and barriers that seemingly causes a church to become stagnated, plateaued, or even declined. And I could give you a lot of statistical information, but probably it's best for me to summarize it in this statement. Did you know that 90% of all churches in America right now are either plateaued or in decline? 90% of all churches in America. There are 300,000 evangelical churches in America right now. 270,000 of them are either in plateau or in decline. Only 10% of the churches in America are growing right now. And that's somewhat of a misnomer because of the 10% that are growing, of that, the 5% or half of them are growing by transfer growth. They're getting growth from all the churches that are declining. People are leaving those churches and going to the new church. And the, old, the other 5% that would be remaining are actually churches that are growing by the force of evangelism. Now you'll hear me talk and you'll discover that I'm not interested in helping you have a bigger, be, bigger or better horse and pony show so you can attract somebody from somebody else's congregation. I believe the way the church should be operating is in health, and in health it should be evangelistic, that it should be reproducing Christians in the body of Christ. So when I talk, I talk about the evangelistic mission. How are we going to reach people more effectively for the kingdom of God? So to do that, I'm going to talk to you for a few moments about vision, because vision is one of those critical pieces that actually helps a church break a barrier, push through obstacles, and begin to achieve the objectives that God has for them to fulfill. Well, in doing so, I've looked at this and I've discovered that there are basically five steps. Let me go right there. Five steps to positioning your church with vision. First of all, number one is to know your mission. Now, there's a lot of people who interchange the word mission and vision, and you may be among that camp here today. But I'm going to kind of give you a, a simple understanding of the way I view these two words for the next few moments. First of all, by knowing your mission. Mission, in my definition, is simply my reason for being. It's why I know we exist 